World Report. The FA issues big fines and lengthy bans to Arsenal and a quartet of brats. UEFA gets in on the disciplinary action by lifting cash off both England and Turkey's football associations. Another Premiership club records increased losses just days after Leeds reports record deaths. And Newell tries to take up the leaders in the Argentine Apertura. We'll have highlights of that contest, plus Kilmez and Gymnasia. Good evening and welcome to the Fox Sports World Report. I'm Jeremy St. Louis. And I'm Michelle Lissell. Also on the show, two more winless teams meet at the Rugby World Cup. And Thursday means Max Brethaus is in makeup, getting set for <laughs> maximum soccer. But first, the FA has its say regarding the month-old Man U Arsenal incident, Jeremy. Yes, they do, Michelle. Arsenal were fined $298,000 U.S. Thursday for failing to control their players in the nil-nil English Premier League draw against Manchester United at Old Trafford back on September the 21st. The English Football Association also fined and banned four Arsenal players, defender Loren and Martin Keown, captain Patrick Vieira, and fellow midfielder Ray Parler for their behavior at the match. Arsenal were also reprimanded and warned about their future conduct after a lengthy disciplinary hearing at FA headquarters in central London, attended by the club's lawyers and manager Arsene Wenger. Arsenal's fine was the second largest handed out to a club in English soccer history. Their North London rivals, Tottenham Hotspur, were fined $1.5 million for financial irregularities back in 1994. Cameroon defender Loren was banned for four matches and fined $67,000 for violent behavior and improper conduct. Martin Keown received a three-match ban and a $33,000 fine for violent behavior. Parler was banned for one match and fined $16,000 for improper conduct. And Vieira was banned for one game and fined $33,000 also for improper conduct. The bans take effect Monday, November 17th, according to the FA. All five Arsenal players had admitted the misconduct charges, and Arsenal Football Club admitted failing to control their players during the game. The game at Old Trafford became bad-tempered when Vieira was sent off in the 81st minute of the game for kicking out at United striker Ruud van Nistelrooy. Van Nistelrooy then missed the last-minute penalty, and after the final whistle, a furious melee ensued, with Loren, Keown, and Parler all confronting the Dutch striker. Vieira's improper conduct charge related to him failing to leave the field of play immediately following his red card. A fifth Arsenal player, England defender Ashley Cole, escaped a ban but was warned about his future conduct and fined $16,000 for a confrontation with United winger Cristiano Ronaldo after the final whistle. Ronaldo and United teammate Ryan Giggs, who plan to contest charges of misconduct relating to the same game, are yet to have their hearings. A club statement on Arsenal's official website read, Following today's FA hearing, the club would once again like to apologize for the conduct of its players during the FA Premier League match against Manchester United at Old Trafford, played on the 21st of September. The club accepts responsibility for the behavior of its players. Arsene Wenger strives to ensure that his players do not cross the line which divides committed play from improper or violent conduct. The players also accept responsibility for their own actions, and Martin Keown, Loren, Patrick Vieira, Ray Parler, and Ashley Cole would like to use this opportunity to apologize for their conduct. As far as the penalties are concerned, the club is currently considering its position. According to FA policy, the Gunners have 14 days to launch an appeal. UEFA charged the English and Turkish football associations with improper conduct and on Thursday hit both organizations with a financial penalty. No individual players were charged over the scuffle, which was captured by television cameras after their Euro 2004 qualifier in Istanbul. Uh, control and disciplinary body today decided to impose a fine of 30,000 Swiss francs on the Turkish FA for the lack of order in the stadium, including throwing of missiles, as well as for the improper conduct of some of its players. And the English FA was fined 10,000 Swiss francs for the improper conduct of some of the players in the tunnel. In reaching its decision, the control and disciplinary body took into account in particular the fact that although the referee had seen the incident in the tunnel among the players concerned, he chose not to take any disciplinary measures on the spot, nor to mention any individuals in his match report. Of course, both FAs can appeal. Although UEFA fined the Turkish FA, they had previously praised them for an excellent overall job on controlling a match that had the potential for producing extreme violence. English fans were banned from the game and there were no major incidents surrounding the match. But flares were set off at the stadium and some missiles thrown onto the pitch. 
A day after Leeds announced record losses, Manchester City came clean on their books. The team reporting debts have increased to over $84 million U.S. after heavy investment in the team saw them retain their premiership status. City splashed out huge on transfer fees on Nicholas Anelka and Robbie Fowler in the year ending May 31st and were rewarded with a ninth place finish. The figures will raise eyebrows and City's managing director Alistair McIntosh explained the debts were secured against the club's new city of Manchester Stadium. City made operating profits of 2.8 million against losses of 10 million in the previous year. However, pre-tax losses rose from 23 to 26 million as a result of player trading. Their overall debts increased from 50 million after Chairman John Wardle and his business partner at the JD Sports Group, David Mackin, made a loan of 16 million to help fund the signings. Existing debts were also refinanced. Turnover for the year increased by 75% from 47 million in 2002 to 83 million this year. Still with Man City, Michael Tarnett has indicated he is ready to extend his stay. The former Bayern Munich star, who turned 34 last Monday, signed a one-year deal in the summer with an option for another 12 months. He claims he's enjoying his new life in England. If they want to make it one year longer, it's not a problem for me, he told the BBC. Tarnett, who has become a fixture in the side, is expected to face Southampton on Saturday. And Sylvain Leguinsky has signed a one-year extension to his Fulham contract in a deal that will keep him at the club until the summer of 2006. Fulham have defied the critics who earmarked them for relegation to make a flying start to the campaign under new manager Chris Coleman, and Leguinsky is the second French midfielder to commit his future to the club. Leguinsky told the club's website, I'm happy to stay at Fulham, as I have always maintained, even when outsiders were trying to speculate otherwise, and I'm happy to think about ending my career here. Fulham Chief Executive Officer Bruce Langham said, we're delighted that Sylvain, along with Steed earlier last week, has chosen to extend his contract. Alan Smith could be handed a three-match suspension after he threw back a bottle into the Ellen Road crowd on Tuesday. A spokesman for the FA said they are awaiting the officials' reports but have looked at video footage of the incident. The FA may use Jamie Carragher's returning of a coin at Highbury as a precedent. The Liverpool defender was fined over $67,000 and received a three-match ban for his actions. If the FA do decide to take any action, then Smith, who turned 23 on Tuesday, is likely to be merely warned as to his future conduct. He has since apologized for the incident and Leeds are reviewing the matter internally. Well, what a difference a day can make after saying Wednesday the club was looking at offers for Helder Postiga, Tottenham caretaker boss David Pleat has now dismissed suggestions that he wants to offload the striker when the transfer window reopens. Postiga has yet to score, and there were reports that Pleat was prepared to let him go in January. However, Pleat saying Thursday, it will come. He is a very strong player for his age, and there are a lot of good things about him, but it takes a while to settle. FIFA has declined to authorize a loan move for Manchester United goalkeeper Fabian Barthez to Marseille. The announcement was made by football's governing body on Thursday. The case was referred to FIFA because the proposed switch would have taken place outside the official transfer window. Barthez has not played for United since the arrival of American keeper Tim Howard. The World Cup winner has been told by national coach Jacques Santini he needs to play regularly if he's to keep his number one jersey for France. But with FIFA ruling against the move, he may have to wait until the transfer window reopens in January before securing a switch to his former club. Germany goalkeeper Oliver Kahn may postpone his planned retirement beyond 2006 because he still feels fit and eager to improve his game. Kahn told Bild newspaper on Thursday he had originally planned to end his playing career and possibly move into management at Bayern Munich after the 2006 World Cup in Germany, but now says he thinks he can continue to improve. Kahn's contract as a player with Bayern runs to 2006 and includes an option to take over a management position with the club after that, possibly replacing commercial manager Yuli Honus, who is planning to retire in 2006. Just last month, Kahn said he would quit if he felt he was no longer competitive after he was criticized for several poor showings. When we come back, Romania and Namibia fight for a win, just one at the Rugby World Cup.